Hey everyone, what are you expecting? What are your expectations of the future? Today, we're gonna to dive into 1 Peter chapter one. So before we do that, let's just invite the presence of the Lord into this time because he is the revealer of scripture, the deep truths. And so it is his delight to just open up the word for us. So Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we invite you into this time, God. Just open our eyes, our ears, our hearts to, to, to just receive, to understand, to grasp a hold of what you're showing us in your word, because that's, that is our, our very man. It is our plumb line. It is a place we go to know right from wrong. It is the place where we learn your heart. It's the place where we test what's happening around us. So Father, we just invite you into this time. We thank you that you are teaching us, that you're healing us, that you're equipping us, that you're raising us up, Father, that you're, you're the one who gives us dreams. You're the one who has imparted life to us. So Father, you are the one who, who has put us here for such a time as this, and you delight when your children spend time with you. So Father, we thank you for this time. Just come, come and hover over each one of us, God, right where we're at. Just let your Holy Spirit, your presence fill the room. We just want to be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go. First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has given us a new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an incorruptible and undefiled inheritance that does not fade away, kept in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. Okay, verse three begins right away with blessed be. Okay, that word blessed here literally means to speak a good word about. Okay, so there's no one who deserves our speaking a good word about more than God, okay? And how often do we think to begin to bless God and to pour out, God, you're so good. God, you have, you have met me here. God, you have provided. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, so often, this might seem like a strange analogy, but, you know, when we go to a funeral or a memorial service, we'll do a eulogy. And what's a eulogy? Well, it's usually stories about the person, about what they have done, the way that they reached out to people. It, it is, in essence, it's meant to be a time of honoring and of blessing. But why on earth don't we do that when people are alive? You know, everyone needs to know that they're valued. Everyone needs to be encouraged. And so how much more, you know, and, and so that should be part of, you know, we're to speak to each other with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. In other words, we're to be encouraging each other in the Lord and also blessing each other. And so, you know, it's just very interesting. But back to God, you know, there's nobody more worthy of receiving that blessing of, of the glory and honor than God. He deserves our praise, right? So, so right here, Peter started out with, blessed be the God and Father. Verse three, blessed be the God and Father. Okay, blessed. Verse, uh, Psalm 103, verse one says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and the, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Wow, all that's in within me. I call forth all that's in within me. In other words, the New Living Translation says, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Or the Passion Translation says, with my whole heart and with my whole life and with my innermost being, I bow and wonder and love before you, the holy God, Yahweh. Verse two, Yahweh, you are my soul celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness that you've done for me? So if you're struggling with expectation as to who God is, what he's going to do, right here, there is a key that when we begin to bless the Lord, when we, when we begin to call forth our whole being to align and begin to bless the Lord, what does it do? Of course, it's going to create within us an expectation of God to move because we're speaking about truths in his word of God. We're speaking about ways that he's been faithful in our past, ways that he is faithful in our present, and ways that he will be faithful in the future. So it calls our whole being into alignment. That's one of the things I love about the way the Passion reads in Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Let me read that to you again. 
with my whole heart, with my whole life, with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God, Yahweh. You are my sole celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness that you've done for me? And yet when we're struggling with expectation, when we're struggling with hope, which is actually what certain expectation of a future is, we're about to get to that. How, isn't it in that season where our own humanity can forget the faithfulness of God, the miracles, the kindness. And with that, the demonic can come in and, and feed off that because the last thing the demonic want us to do is to remember the miracles of kindness that God has done for us. Okay, so that can war against that certain expectation of a future. When we go back to 1 Peter 1, 3 to 6, then it talks about a new birth or a new life. You know, we belong to Christ. We're sons and daughters of the most high God and all that goes with that, which includes a living hope. Now, again, the concept of biblical hope, we've talked about this before, but the concept of biblical hope is not wishful thinking. Okay, so questions for you. What are the promises that you found in scripture? What are the promises that God's actually spoken over your life that you know, because you know that they're promises from God? Are, are these things surrounded with expectation or are they surrounded with doubt? Because you see, biblical hope is a certain expectation of a future. So as we keep moving through 1 Peter, we move right into Christ's resurrection from the dead. You know, quite honestly, when a loved one is dying or when we're faced with our own humanity, it can be difficult to remember that death does not have the final say because it's such a hard separation here on the face of the earth. But, you know, Paul speaks into this in 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read 55 to 58 out of the Passion Translation. And it says, so death, tell me, I, I like that because it's kind of like a conversation. Okay, so death, tell me, where's your victory? Tell me, death, where is your sting? It is sin that gives death its sting, the law that gives sin its power. But we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. So now, beloved ones, stand firm, stable, and enduring. Live your lives with an unshakable confidence. We know that we prosper and we excel in every season by serving the Lord because we are assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with fruit that endures. Hope, certain expectation of a future. Okay, and couple that, couple what we're reading in 1 Peter with what I just read in 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, so, okay, death, where's your sting? Yeah, it hurts on this side, but you don't have the final say. There's so much we don't understand, but death, you don't have the final say. Whether we understand it or not, you don't have the final say. So therefore, I know that my God gives me victory. I know that my God has created me to be a conqueror, in fact, more than a conqueror. So therefore, I can stand firm, I can be stable, and I can endure. I can endure the trials, I can endure the tribulation, I can endure the pain, because I have a certain expectation of a future, which is called hope, because of who my God is. So that gives me and unshakable confidence. And how many of us have unshakable confidences? I certainly have some work to do with that. How about you? Okay, so, but we are created to actually have such a strong hold on who our God is and to understand the grasp that he has on us that we become unshakable. And because of that, we prosper and we excel in every good season? No, it says we prosper and we excel in every season just say every season in every season by serving the lord okay that's how we do it because we serve the lord in every season when we do that we will prosper and excel in every season so the last word i want to look at today out of first peter one is the word protected the verse talks about inheritance that does not fade away kept in heaven for you um, there, some of the commentators actually take this back to the promised land where the people were given an inheritance by the Lord, but they defiled that by their sin, they defiled that land. And so here 
when it talks about the inheritance that does not fade away. It's kept in heaven. It's protected by the power of God. Okay, that, that concept is that God has more for us that actually cannot be defiled because it's kept in heaven for us. There's an inheritance for, on the earth. There's an inheritance for us in heaven. Okay, so right here, we're talking about this, this concept of being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation. So let me just read that section. Um, let's see. To an incorruptible and undefiled inheritance that does not fade away, kept in heaven for you. Who are protected? Who's protected? You're protected. Who are protected? How? By the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while you've had to suffer various trials. Um, Romans 12, 3 talks about God having assigned us a measure of faith. You're assigned a measure of faith. Don't get caught up on, okay, what's that measure? How big is it? The measure of faith that God has given you is sufficient to stand firm against the trials and tribulations if you keep your focus. Okay, he protects and he guards that measure of faith that he's put within us. Some people would say, well, what about so-and-so who walked away from the Lord? What about this? What about that? The word of God says that he protects and guards. And, you know, because in the moment we see somebody walk away does not mean that's the end. Okay. I'm to the point actually with those um, in my circle who have walked away from the Lord or are not living for him right now. My prayer has been, Lord, I, I want them back because of the promises I'll stand on your word. I also now want the plunder for what's been stolen away for the years that have been stolen ways. They haven't been walking with you. I want, I want the plunder also, which means I want the individual. I want their spouse. I want their friends. I want their coworker. I want the plunder. Okay. And so, because God protects and guards that measure of faith. So because of all this and more, no matter what your situation, you can have an expectation for your future because what's happening around us, whether it's in our personal lives, whether it's in our nations, whether it's in the world, whether it's something phys physically, okay, whatever it is, whatever that situation is, whatever that trial or tribulation is, it does not have the last say, God does. And because of this, we can have hope, which is a certain expectation of a future that we leave in the hands of a living, loving God. Okay, so so again, whatever we're going through, it doesn't necessarily have the final say, because when we say that that situation or circumstance has a final say, then we're pulling God out of the equation. And some of us need to put God back in the equation because we've been letting the, the you know, whatever's going on have a louder voice in our lives than God does. And so it's a great day. It's a great day to realign, get hope back in there, that certain expectation of a future because of who our God is. Amen. All right. So thank you for joining me. Please share this. Uh, spread the word with others. We just want to continue to, to grow in our walk with the Lord and invite others to join us. Please feel free to visit the website, ruthhendrickson.com. You'll find all sorts of resources on there. And including, you know, if you're, if you're really struggling right now with your situation, with your circumstance, and you need some help getting through it, getting back on that solid ground, finding that hope, if you go to the website, ruthhendrickson.com, you can also find out the information about Michelle Ministry, which is, uh, we train in that, how to minister using that model, but we also have a team that ministers internationally, emotional healing and deliverance. And so you can find out all the information on there. You can find the application. You can find out how to connect with our international team who would be delighted to minister to you because you're made to soar. You're made to soar on the wings of eagles in every season of life, not just the easy ones, but every season of life. And that just blows me away. The extravagant love that God has for us, that he wants us to prosper. He wants you to prosper in every season of life. How cool is that? Just let that, you know, what does it mean? That would be a great journaling question with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to prosper in every season of life? Wow. What does that mean? What would change in my life? If I believe that God wants me to prosper in every season of life, what would change? 
All right, so that's a wrap for today. You guys have a great day. Be so blessed. Remember that you are dearly loved, that you are here for such a time as this. God has plans and purposes for you, and they are good. And you're to live expectantly because of who the Lord is. You're to live filled with hope. And you know what? Take some time today and just bless the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.